About six years ago, I first started having migraines. It started out as just a bad headache, but it grew increasingly worse over time. Sometimes I would start waking up in the middle of the night, my head pounding so bad it made my neck twitch. I would just lie there, bobbing my head to the beat of the pain. It would come about once every two or three months, but it would incapacitate me completely. Sometimes my visions got too blurry to work. Other days I could just do nothing but vomit. Once, my hearing was impaired for several days. The pounding in my head just got so loud that I could actually hear it. I tried everything. First, I thought it was just dehydration. I started to drink a bottle of water every day just in case. The headache still came back. This time so strong that it actually woke me up several times a night. Then I cut out caffeine. For two months I didn't even have a Fanta. Not the slightest hint of caffeine. The headache came back anyway. So the problem was neither caffeine nor dehydration. I tried several other things. Regular exercise, a better pillow, cutting out sugar, massage, documenting my sleep cycles. Nothing worked. As I started having more regular headaches, I had lost about 10 pounds just from loss of appetite. Sure, I could use the weight loss, but this was getting ridiculous. About four years ago, I talked to my dad about it. Apparently, violent headaches runs in the family. He's a regular tough guy who wouldn't go to the hospital for no less than a stroke or a broken bone, so he never really thought about it. He just recommended me some over-the-counter migraine pills, lots of sleep, and trying not to think about it. I took his advice. About a year ago, just before the lockdown, I was at a party. One of the other guests happened to be a doctor. She mentioned having a headache earlier that day and not being sure if she could have gone to the party at all. So I mentioned my own experiences with headaches. The more I explained my symptoms, the more she just looked at me. She seemed confused. It might be tension related, but no, that doesn't make any sense. She said, you should probably check that out. So... I did. I live in a town that fortunately has a very good hospital, one of the best in the country. I explained my symptoms to a nurse and got to speak to a doctor shortly thereafter. I had brought my notebook, showing I tried pretty much everything I could think of, and the doctor agreed that she would take it seriously. I got a remission to a specialist at the neurology department two weeks later and was told to keep taking notes. They were especially curious about my pain levels. When I finally met the doctor, Kenneth, I was nervous as hell. I had been keeping this quiet from my family and friends, not wanting anyone to worry. But when you're there, standing next to a medical professional that thinks something might be seriously wrong with you, you want someone to be there with you. I am a grown-ass man, but I would have loved to have my mum there. I was put through several tests. I had to fill out several health declaration forms, then test blood, urine, and an ECG. It was over pretty quickly, and Dr. Kenneth promised to keep in touch. It took eight days, and those were some of the longest days of my life. Of course, it all turned out to be nothing. I had surprisingly good blood values, no heart problems, and no substance irregularities. There was a slight suspicion of lead poisoning. I had to come in for more tests. I came back, and we sat down in Kenneth's office. He seemed uncomfortable. He told me he would be prescribing a more powerful migraine medication. It came in a syringe form. But that he wanted to run a scan on me first, to eliminate worst-case scenarios. So, I had a CAT scan. I kind of blacked out. I don't remember anything about it, apart from a feeling of unease. A few days later, he called me back. I had to come in for a second CAT scan. I was really weirded out about it. Apparently, the first was inconclusive. They run another scan, and I had to lie in a different position. This time, I didn't even have to go home afterwards. 
I just had to wait for a few hours. I sat in the waiting room, trying to figure out how to tell my parents that I might have a serious brain condition. I had the bullet points written on the back of a receipt. Then I got called back to Kenneth's office. He seemed frustrated as he closed the door behind me. I don't really know what to tell you, he said. We thought it was a reading error at first. Then he showed me the pictures. At the very front of my forehead, there's a shade obscuring parts of my brain. At first it looked like a tumour. It scared me senseless. It is not a tumour, he explained. I'm not entirely sure what it is. He then showed me the second set of pictures. Now, it is clearer. As I lay on my side, it is not a tumour. But it kind of looks like a cloud on the front of my forehead. Some kind of disturbance. I've never seen this, but looking at it made me realise the issue is not part of your brain, but the front part of your cranium. Look at this again. I took another look at the first picture, at the very front of my forehead. If you looked closely, there was a pattern. Small circles, some full, some empty, some half full. Geometric lines, all contained within a square, about three inches across. It didn't look organic. It is metallic, Kenneth explained. At first, I thought it was some sort of cyst just under the skin, but it's not that simple. It is not entirely iron either, as it didn't react to the scan. He tapped the side of his head. It's on the inside of your cranium, sort of like an iron tattoo on the inside of your skull. Of course, there was no explanation. How the hell do you explain something like that? Ever since I got the results, I've been doing chelation therapy. Even though the tattoo isn't completely iron, it gave me the same side effects as that of heavy iron poisoning. Chelation therapy really, really helps, even though the side effects are bullshit. I don't really get those migraines anymore. I still get sensations in my head, but they're no longer headaches. I can feel a warmth from my forehead at times. It can be so strong and so precise that once I actually managed to draw the lines and patterns from tracing my fingers across my forehead. It is hard to explain what it looks like. Sort of like a circuit board, but made of worms. I still have regular checkups with Dr. Kenneth, but there seems to be no more that can be done. As my symptoms have evened out, there is little reason left for me to come in. I just have to live with it. It just isn't worth the risk of invasive brain surgery, even though it might be an option in the future. It's so weird living with this. I can feel it. And as soon as I start to think about it, I just feel it more. I get this awful claustrophobic feeling, and I started to get panic attacks. Whenever there's sunlight directly on my face, that small part of my head gets warm real fast. I no longer have headaches, but I sometimes feel very, very weird sensations. Last week, I woke up in the middle of the night, trying to scratch something that felt like a phantom limb coming out of my head. Like there was supposed to be something there. I don't even want to start thinking about where it came from, or what it means. I know it's there, and no matter what I do, it'll stay there. I sometimes smack my head with my hand, as if to realign my head, but I don't think it does anything. I don't know what this is, and I don't know if I can live with it. Even if I can, I don't know if I want to. Hello listeners. If you enjoyed this story, please check out the author in the description. For more content, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more sinister readings.